I want to thank you for coming on and uh, joining me today, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whenever it is for you listening well, to this. Yeah, it's well, it's this evening for us. So we are um, we're eight p.m. Melbourne, Australia, right now. So you're five a.m. in Kentucky. And Daniel, you just told me that you've done a forty-five minute cycle before you met, uh, or before we had this meeting, mate. So that means you are very much on brand with what we do with the Dead Bob Project. So I'm Rav Thomas, and and one of the guys behind our charity and our movement. So the dot Dead Project on Instagram, and we're an Australian based. Look, I, I don't even know what you call it. I said charity or movement. You're more a movement than anything else, but just basically offering free resources to men where the statistics around men's mental and physical health in Australia are not that great. They're really not. I don't know what they're like in America, and I'm going to guess they're a little similar. Um, and so between, um, you know, a bunch of people that we work with of varying profiles and from varying disciplines, we just wanted to put together a resource for men to find ways just to get a little better every day, physically and mentally, and give themselves a better chance of feeling better and being better. What kind of got you into all that kind of stuff? For me personally, it's something I've done my whole life, uh, and it's very much part of my life. I'll train every day, no matter what. You know, so th- that was one of those things. But in the, I'm a, I am I work as a host for um, a lot of sporting events and a lot of that sort of stuff, and, and I have a company that represents a lot of sporting talent for appearances and speaking events. And so it was through those guys that we were, because we had such a platform and we had a lot of guys that had really good platforms in terms of their socials and stuff like that, we knew that we we were pretty convinced that we'd be able to do a bit of good in the world and a bit for our country, and particularly because where we are in Melbourne, we just broke the world record for the longest lockdown. So essentially, I mean, we've had a few bits here and there, but six lockdowns later, we've had pretty much 20 months locked inside our house. So one, that provided us with a bit of time to be able to embark on something like this. But what it also did, um, it just highlighted probably how necessary these sorts of conversations are uh, because lockdowns are not great for people's mental health. Uh, And a lot of the time they're not great for people's physical health, you know, when people can't, go to a gym for 18 months then. Uh, so it was a really good time for us to sort of, it was one of those ones that had sat there for a long time, but it, it sort of became a situation where we went, well, look, now's the time to, to really give it a nudge. And, and that's what we're doing, talking to great people like you. Absolutely. And it just, you know, the, the whole lockdown thing, a lot of people went through that no matter where they were in the world. And, you know, even somebody who is really into health, really into fitness, like myself, you know, I struggled during that period, couldn't go to the gym for quite a while. And I just kind of got out of the routine of, of a workout and, and I didn't really make up for it too much, you know, with, with my diet, I never was like, you know, fell off the wagon when it comes to that kind of thing. But I can only imagine, you know, we've had here in America, a pretty good time now back to, you know, being able to do pretty much anything we wanted, you know, and, and that can, can certainly lead back to a healthier lifestyle. But I feel like for a lot of people, you know, just taking that break, forced break, really, a lot of people probably aren't getting into back into it at all, or at least getting back into it the same way. So, you know, I can only imagine how this quarantine period has really affected just so many people, whether they be previously were were into working out or they weren't into working out. And now they're, they're kind of you know, even more on edge about going into a gym and things like that. Definitely. And I think, look, for a lot of the the guys that we've spoken to, um, and not that we necessarily do it exclusively with guys, you know, that's sort of our our main demographic, however, is that lockdown sent people one way or the other. Uh, It meant they either drank less or drank more. Um, and a lot of people drank more and they were sitting at home every night. So, that you know, that's not a good thing and, you know, their diet really suffered. Um, look, and some people that were really into it allowed them to train a whole lot more and do more things because they weren't driving to work and, you know, so, but for a lot of people that just didn't, you know, they needed the structure and the routine of a gym class or they needed the equipment or whatever it was. So, look, that's still an issue now in that gyms still in Melbourne in Australia are not open and, you um, neither are pubs and neither is anything else, mate. So we're really just hoping that 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 needs to happen really soon so people can get back in their gyms and get back to their lives. And um, and it's like you said, it's going to be really interesting to see, you know, whether some people, uh, you know, they, they develop the unfortunate bad habit of 
because they couldn't train, they stopped training and they developed that bad habit of not training. Um, and, you know, how hard it's going to be maybe for some people to get back into those routines. Absolutely. So moving kind of to your podcast and, you know, I think it's going to be a really cool podcast. So tell us a little bit about the podcast and kind of what you, what you hope it turns into and, and achieves. It was a bit of an add-on to what we're doing, but we knew we'd had quite a number of our, I guess, our followers ask whether we would be able to sort of deliver some more and more detailed information. And um, and you're right, that there is still a void, I think. Whilst there is a lot of things happening in this space, there's still a lot of void, I think, for, you know, middle-aged men are feeling like maybe they're not heard, maybe they're not listened to, maybe they're really battling. They probably haven't developed good habits about speaking to one another about it or seeking help around it. Um, and the statistics reflect that. The statistics in Australia are just downright terrible when it comes to male suicide, etc. cetera. So, um, you know, so to be able to have just those conversations where at the very least blokes realise they're not alone, whether that is around issues with their children, with their divorce, with their training, um, you know, We've got three key pillars around diet, training and mental health, but we've even done things like we've got an online dating coach coming on. We've got Australia's basically leading voice for alcohol, Professor Emmanuel Kunch is on in a couple of weeks. Um, you know, so conversations around alcohol are really important as well because they're, they're conversations where we probably need to up our game a little bit. Um, so the subjects that we're going to cover are really on brand and some of them are just downright interesting. Um, the online dating one was really quite interesting. There's a few tips and tricks that we might get out of that. So that one's going to uh, drop in a couple of weeks. Um, so we had Australia's leading dating coach on there. Um, so, and they're just, they're good conversations for blokes to have with other blokes. And again, you don't have to be a dad and you don't even have to be a bloke. You don't have to be a guy to engage in what we're doing. Um, but conversations like you and I are having right now are important. And I think it's something we need to give more focus to. Yeah, I do think it is something that we need to give more focus to as well. You know, just for the average person to want to go get some good advice, you know, they still want to train hard and be healthy, but they may not want to do it to the extent of like sports performance, or they don't want to do it to the extent of like going to get a glute workout in. So it's like, where's the middle ground there, you know? And I feel like you guys are hitting a pretty good um, target there with just helping out the average guy. Really appreciate it. Look, absolutely, and that is what we're trying to do. And it's really just that that whole concept, like I said earlier, is just get a little bit better every day. Now, that might be meditate for two minutes tomorrow if you find that works. Um, it might be have two, three, four alcohol-free days in a week. It might be if you haven't trained for a long time, just go for a walk. Don't even overthink it, but just do something tomorrow. Get a little bit better every day to give yourself a better chance. Oh, but, and I must put an asterisk next to that too, because the one thing we've really found is that there is no one size fits all for men when it comes to physical and mental health. And when it comes to diet, you know, there's a lot of guys that we have that might have done a keto diet that worked really well and for others that didn't. Meditation worked for some fellows and it didn't for others. Um, and, you know, so it, it's really about here, whoever is giving the voice to the particular platform at the particular time said, listen, I'm one guy. I tried this. It worked for me. It might work for you to get a little bit better. Yeah. And I think that's what it's about too. Just going out there every day and trying to get a little bit better. We don't have to, uh, you know, make these huge leaps every single day because realistically we're probably not going to. Uh, But on that same level, like why do you think so many men tend to give up kind of on themselves physically at a certain point? It, look, there are a number of reasons, and you just got the first one. And again, I'm I'm one guy with one opinion. I'm not an expert in this field, but you na- you really nailed it with that first one. There is because you, you, something like diet in particular, there is so much information. Now we've learned that none of the stuff to get hold of is actually particularly difficult in terms of working out your ratios between fat and carbohydrate or quality carbohydrate versus shit carbohydrate, whatever else. None of that information is difficult, but the quantity of information is hard and same with training with things like that it's like oh god you know there's a lot of people that just go i just don't know where to begin so i'm not going to begin so that's where we that's one thing that we've tried to do with the dead bod project is really break that down and just go listen instead of white rice try basmati rice instead of wholemeal pasta try sorry instead of regular pasta try wholemeal pasta whatever that is just really quick easy things to do one thing different today that might make you a bit better that might make 
that might work for you or might not. So that's what, that's the first reason I think for a lot of guys is that it just becomes overwhelming. So you just go, I'm just, you know, it's just, it's too hard and I'm not going to do it. And I think the other thing that you sort of touched on there is that it, we put up a Jordan Peterson quote the other day. We do a lot of Jordan Peterson quotes for what it's worth. But he's he had this real thing about aim low. And he didn't say, oh, I don't mean don't aim. But basically it was around the concept, if, you, if you're aiming too high, it's too hard. It's the same with your kids. It's the same with everything. Set yourself a goal that is easy and attainable and then just get a bit better all the time. So if you haven't trained for a while and you want a six-pack in three weeks, well, it's not going to happen. But if you can say to yourself, listen, if I, just, if I haven't trained for a while, I'm going to go for a walk tomorrow and I'm going to do one thing in my diet that's a little better and I might do one thing for my mental health that's a little better and they, again, can be really simple things like send a text message or a DM to one of your mates that you haven't spoken to in three months or six months or whatever. They're very, very easy things to get a little bit better every day on those three fronts that we talk about around diet, training and mental health. That's probably the key to it for fellas is just go, listen, I'm just going to do this one thing tomorrow and I'll see where it leads me. Yeah. And a lot of times when it comes to just doing all that, there's so many things that seem to pop up and come and, and become obstacles. You know, there's always the, the time obstacle. There's always the money obstacle, but really there's just, I mean, obstacles here, there and everywhere. It seems like so what have been some of the biggest obstacles in your own journey and how have you kind of put things into place, kind of protocols and procedures, if you want to call them that, to help overcome those obstacles? You know, a lot of the obstacles that, that you think are in the way are actually not as challenging as it feels, you know. But the key to overcoming the obstacle is just get off the couch, just do it, whatever it is you're going to do, just, you know, do that thing. But look, the, you know, the obstacle for me, uh, pers- I'm a single dad with a couple of kids and so in terms of managing that and managing lockdowns, you know, they're genuine obstacles that everyone in Australia has faced, and in particular where we are in Melbourne, Victoria, it's just been a real catastrophe for a lot of people. So, look, you know, they're obstacles that I I wouldn't have missed many days at the gym and I haven't been to the gym in 18 months. So, you know, so overcoming the obstacles of working with a lot more free weights and things at home that's personally been really hard for me particularly as a guy in my 40s and so um with a, you know a few training injuries that have I've developed over the journey that's that's been the single biggest challenge in terms of my in terms of what we're going through at the moment is just to manage my injuries a little bit with a lot less equipment and so to have to give a lot of more thought to how I'm going to train um so I can still walk the next day you know one time one thing that I think of and, and I struggle with this a lot is like trying to create or find this perfect plan. But in reality, it's more about the execution side of the things than, than it is actually about this quote unquote perfect plan. Yeah. Well, because there isn't a perfect plan. The problem is particularly through social media. I mean, it's like you were saying, find a person, you might find an Instagram account like the dad bod project that might work for you, whatever it is that that can assist you in that way. But the problem with Instagram is it, it you know, and all those, those platforms are giving us the impression that, you know, go and do this and then this is what it's going to be like. And it just doesn't work like that. You're not going to look like that guy or that girl tomorrow. She doesn't or he doesn't probably look like that anyway for what it's worth. So we're given this whole image of this is how it's meant to be, this is what it's meant to be like. And then I think a lot of people go, well, this is unattainable. I'm just not even going to do anything. And this is not the message. The message with the Dadbot Project at the very least is don't, don't try and be like that page or that person or whatever it is. Just try and be a little bit better than you were yesterday. So you, we've, we've talked about mental health. You've mentioned uh, you know that phrase a few times. But was something was that something that you want to you know talk about on your podcast more? Was that something you want to you know just kind of make a focus on more? Because the, the statistics in Australia, at least around mental health, and particularly for men, and particularly for men twenty five through forty five, are terrible. Right. Um, so. Six men in Australia are committing suicide every day, um, and that's just a simply unacceptable statistic. We also know that, and whilst we're speaking very generally and generically, that we know that if you're in physically better chance, in better shape, sorry, you've got a better chance of being mentally in better shape as well. So these things are all connected around diet training and mental health. So they're separate subjects, but they're very connected subjects. So that's where mental health comes in a lot. And again, it, it's their subjects that have really come to come into play 
um, in COVID times. So, it, and and we've so also noticed, I think, too, with just sort of interaction and the nature of our posts and the DMs and stuff that we're getting is that that seems to be where there is a real void for the people that we're talking to and where we're really lacking, you know. So I mentioned things about whether white rice or basmati rice or homo pass or whatever it is. We know that when we put a post up about dads that are struggling and that, that a dad will get to the end of the day and not a single person asked how he was and that, that men need encouragement too, that stuff really gets a lot of interaction so that's probably why we, you know, we've sort of discovered that there is a real need for that stuff. So, you know, we've pro- probably pushed a bit harder in that particular direction. Gotcha. So, you know, I think the, the thing about mental health and you said it was like your mental health is connected to your physical health and they kind of just, you know, flow back and forth. Sometimes it's hard to tell like when one stops and when the other one, you know, ends. But yeah, and, and a big part of mental health is like, challenging yourself because that that you know that that creates like satisfaction and confidence and things like that but then you also have to have this other side of like taking a break you know having a time to chill out and recover and and physically mentally do you know recover and how do you know like what are some signs or what like what what are some thoughts going through your head when it when when you need to take a break versus when you need to just like keep on pushing like when when each one of those is beneficial. How do you know when actually to to take that break? That's it's a really great question and a really really hard one. And I think those that get better at it when you've done it a long time, um, you can work it out. Look back to your first point. Yes, the little victories are really really important, whatever they are, and whether that's in your job with your family, with your and in particular with your training, where you're getting a little bit better. Those little victories will always help you mentally because that's what it's about. It's about, you know, just getting up and, and having an impact on the day. In terms of when to take a break, look, it's a it's a really big one, particularly for those, like I say, men that are doing weight training because you're not growing or getting stronger when, you are, or when you're in the gym. You do it when you're recovering. And that's something that I've really struggled with as a trainer because I just sort of got to this point where I just want to train every day when a lot of days I shouldn't and recognising the difference between a good pain and a bad pain because the problem with weight training it is it's about pain right it is a, it's a painful thing so just trying to recognize when that pain is serving you versus when it is working against you is something that i think a lot of athletes will struggle with you know athletes whether they're professional athletes or just you know blokes that are training that it's a it's a really important one but look rest is a really big one and not just that doesn't mean just sitting on the couch and throwing on netflix it actually probably um this is another conversation that comes up a lot particularly now is because we don't and that's why meditation has really popped up a lot into and i'm certainly not a meditation expert i can tell you that for sure but we've spoken to a lot of guys that are of varying profiles where meditation has really really helped them and i think that's another one that's popped up a lot more too because we never really stop now we've always got a phone in our hand we're always you know even when we're taking a piss we've got a phone in our hand so when you first wake up in the morning, you're like, I'm going to check my DMs. I'm, I'm going to see, you know, we're straight to Facebook or Insta or whatever it is or TikTok, you know. So having moments where you stop and just stop whatever that means for you, and that might be just sitting on the couch, focusing on your breathing if that's what it is. It might just be going for a walk and listening to music even or not listening to music, not having a phone with you. I reckon they've become more and more important because this is all sort of really new for us. We've only really had, we've had mobile phones for a while, but in terms of having all this stuff where if you're waiting in line right now, you won't, the first thing you'll do, like we're just always wide and always on. And I reckon that's something that we all need to be a little better at, something that I certainly need to be better at is just stopping, check in with yourself, reconvene. Those things are really important. And I think we've all got to find all of us need to find better ways to do that and do it more often. It's crazy when it comes to like social media of any kind, how it really has put the focus like on other people so much. We're kind of in this like self-absorbed world in a way, but it's also like we're self-absorbed with what other people are doing. It's like a weird kind of dichotomy there. And even when we like post something, we're more concerned about like what other people think about it. Like are other people liking or other people commenting you know, we, we probably could very rarely sit back and think about like what our actual picture was we posted more than like what this person commented on that picture or who liked the picture, you know, it's just, I think, you know, social media has so many benefits to it. I don't want to like completely discredit the benefits of it, but when it comes to like the, 
the social kind of long term effects, you know, it makes you question like, are these things helping us more or hurting us more? And it's it's something I think, you know, we're gonna find out here in, you know, five, ten, twenty years when the, you know, eight year olds who have, you know, TikToks are, you know, thirty years old and we'll see, you know, how that where that leads us. You bet. And look, and I've got a couple of young kids and it's something that's and the, the problem is because it's already here, you can't just sort of go, well, we're not going to do it. We're just going to go and live off the grid. Like we live in the real world and so it's there. So it's a real challenge and it is new. It's absolutely new and it's new for all of us. So the eight-year-olds, my God, it's a frightening thing. Um, but even for the 45-year-olds, it is also too because, you know, and w- what I think it does is it creates an expectation in a lot of areas that's not realistic and that's causing a lot of people problems because they feel like their lives are not meeting that expectation, whether it's physically or just, you know, the way um, everyone else is going. So, yes, look, some real challenges there. And another reason, like I said, to just at least, if you can, have a bit of time away from it. Yeah, definitely. Take some time for yourself. And uh, what is some advice for for men who just really know they need to get back into shape, know they need to go, you know, hit the gym or whatever, know they need to start eating better, but just are struggling with that? Keep it simple and start with small, just little things. It, you don't you don't have to overthink that. You don't have to go to the gym. If you haven't been training for a while, you don't have to go tomorrow and make sure that you're doing your bench press perfectly with your thumbs in the right angle from your front delts and make sure you're going out at that 37-degree angle or all that sort of stuff, which is still stuff that we, we talk a lot about, that stuff for what it's worth. You don't have to do that. If you haven't done it for a while, you can do something as simple as go for a walk you can make one change to your diet tomorrow, which might be if eat something green. It might be um, something mentally, which might be try and meditate for one minute. It might be text a mate that you haven't spoken to for a bit, whatever it is. And for your training, it might be just go for a walk or it might be do some push-ups today. See if you can do a chin-up. And if you can't, try. And if you get to do one, then come back in a couple of days and try and do two. So you don't have to overthink it. The key thing is that you're moving. And if it's something, if you don't, if you haven't had a lifetime where you are, whether it's whether it's part of your life and you are finding it really challenging, then do the thing you hate the least. Find the line of least resistance. Now that might be a gym class in the morning where you have that distraction and that camaraderie and that structure. So it comes down to whatever that environment is. You know, some people are better. I personally prefer to train by myself, but a lot of people prefer to train with someone and find that helps them or whether it's run with someone or walk with someone or whatever. So find that thing that is easiest and doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but easiest, the line of least resistance, and just do that because it's less about what you're doing. It's just the fact that you're moving in the first place. And if you're moving, then you're still lapping everyone else that's sitting on their couch. Definitely. Yeah. Just get out there, go do something, uh, you know, try multiple things, figure out what you really you know, are passionate about? Because I think everybody has something that they're passionate about, whether it's rock climbing or lifting weights or, you know, swimming, whatever it is, there's, there's a million different ways to get out there and and get a good workout in and and actually enjoy it. So yeah, really good advice. And I really appreciate you coming on the podcast and, you know, appreciate what you're doing out there and and helping men and helping obviously more than just men, but, you know, helping men in a, in a time where it feels like men sometimes get, uh, a little bit left behind in the in the general details of things and not specific help so much. So thank you for coming on and thank you for the work you're doing. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you soon.